creating unnecessary obstacles for us to prevent us from being able to march. Shame! In the midst of a genocide that has been ongoing for 12 months, they know that our movement is a movement that is just. They know that we are here speaking the truth and calling for an end to this genocide. And still, they are using excuses to slow us down and criminalize and censor us. Shame! This movement is nothing without all of you. So please give yourselves a round of applause and make some noise for yourselves. As you all know, for the past 17 years, the entirety of the Gaza Strip has been under a brutal and evil style siege with the 2.3 million Palestinians there, living in the most densely populated place on earth. Even calling it an open air prison is not doing justice. Shame! And since last October, the Zionist entity has intensified this siege, shamelessly declaring that they will cut off all food, water, electricity and medicine from entering the Gaza Strip. Shame! Israeli politicians and military commanders are publicly and shamelessly calling the 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza human animals and labeling them as legitimate targets. Shame! They are labeling us as targets for the crime of existing on our land Shame! Shame! And for over a year now, Northern Gaza, especially, has been the location of the world's most unthinkable atrocities. The Zionist entity has completely flattened Gaza with its airstrikes, using more explosive power than in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs and more than any other war in history. Shame! Shame! What we are seeing now is nothing more than an ethnic cleansing campaign that has been launched after the Israeli military realized its failures to accomplish its military objectives in Gaza. Shame! They know that they cannot defeat the resistance in the field, and so they resort to collective punishment and indiscriminate bombardment of our people in an effort to crush the will of resistance and crush our people's will to survive and exist on their land. Shame! Yeah. What we are seeing now is the same thing that happened in 1948 when the Zionist entity launched the Nakba targeting Der Yassin village using massacres, starvation and terrorism in an effort to expel our people from the land. And right now, we're seeing those same tactics being used in the north of Gaza, where our people are being told that they have two choices, either to flee or to die. Shame! Shame! They do not know that our people's will to survive and resist their occupier is unbending! <laughs> So what we're seeing right now in the north of Gaza, especially in Jabalia and Beit Lahia right now, is nothing short of an atrocity that is happening in front of our eyes, live stream for the entire world to see, in which we're seeing people burnt alive in their hospital beds as they recover from past atrocities. Shame! <laughs> that the United States has sent its special forces into Jabalia and they are part of the ethnic cleansing and extermination campaign that our people are facing right now. So as we stand in front of the U.S. consulate, let our message be clear. 
that we are not only holding the Zionist entity responsible, we are holding its, its sponsor and we're holding the U.S. empire for all of these atrocities that are unfolding before us. Shame! <laughs> know that the only way that Israel is able to continue this genocide and even continue to exist as a colonial project is thanks to the support that it receives from the US, Canada and other Western nations which provide it with political, diplomatic and military support. Shame! This is why we've been taken to these streets for the last 12 months demanding an immediate arms embargo on the Zionist entity because we cannot let these corrupt politicians say that they support a ceasefire while they continue to arm the people that are committing a genocide. Shame! The continuation of the Nakba which started in 1948 and the genocide we've been witnessing for the last 12 months has now expanded into Lebanon in which Lebanese people are being collectively punished for the resistance against Zionism and genocide. Shame! Right now, in Jabalia, in Beth Lahia, and throughout the north of Gaza, the catastrophe deepens by the minute as drone strikes and tank fire block every escape route. It has been confirmed that the U.S. has been a part of this ethnic cleansing campaign side by side with the Zionist entity. And this is why we say from Lebanon to Palestine <laughs> capturing our people and imprisoning them. Capturing our boys and our men lining them up for execution and then dumping their bodies in mass graves. Shame! Yeah. We must now more than ever continue to mobilize and escalate and never slow down our momentum for Gaza, for Lebanon, for the entire Arab world and for the entire world that is under the boot of Zionism and U.S. imperialism. Despite, despite all of these atrocities, Despite all of what we've been seeing over the last 12 months, the people of Gaza have not been broken. The people of Gaza are still insisting on life and dignity. They are still coming together and caring for one another. They are still steadfast and their commitment to this struggle and for national liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. See their friends and family killed. They do not get sad and see them as a fallen loved one. They actually see them as a rising martyr because that is what they are. They are all rising martyrs. And inshallah, all of our people are martyrs and they will see justice if not in this life, but in the next one. Free, free, free Palestine! The U.S. consulates, the base of the U.S. empire in this country. Let our voices be loud and clear to them and to all of the corrupt politicians that we so-called, the so-called leaders of this nation that if we do not get our justice they will not get their peace if we don't get no justice We are honored to have with us today Fred Hahn Fred Hahn the president of QG Ontario represents over 290,000. Those of you who cannot see this crowd, you should know it is massive and it is growing.
the first in Canada to adopt a BDS campaign, the call to join BDS. <laughs> have voted democratically on resolutions including at our most recent national convention last fall where we called on the Canadian government to demand a ceasefire to end arms sales to Israel to remove diplomatic immunity to the state of Israel by demanding that we mobilize inside our union to call for a two-way arms embargo and to, and to have the Canadian state honour the ICC warrant against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. The resolutions, we are committed to working with our members, to doing member-to-member -member education to make sure that people understand the history of Israel's occupation and colonization of Palestine and the Canadian state's role in propping up this horrible Zionist regime. It's important that as the largest union in Canada, our members have decided to do this, but we did it in part because of a call from Palestinian trade unionists for solidarity. As workers, when workers in any part of the world call on our solidarity, we must be there with them! <laughs> As unions around the globe have shown up, unions are rising to this call. Workers are blockading ports preventing ships carrying war materials to Israel. We are disrupting weapons manufacturers. This is happening in Colombia, where unions there are, are calling for a suspension of all coal to Israel. Japanese unions are fighting against their government support of Israel. Activists have shut down weapons factories from Edinburgh to Denmark. My God, here in the city of Toronto, activists have shut down weapons facilities a number of times. At months of pressure, tens of thousands of people in the street, the Liberals in Ottawa finally passed a motion calling for a ceasefire and an arms embargo. Or an crazy arms wasn't enough. We learned that then our government was shipping arms to the United States in order to get them to Israel. And that's why today is so important. We must continue to say, not in our name, stop selling weapons to Israel that will kill children and families. legislature. And as the Ontario uh, leader, I would be remiss if I didn't remind us all of the role that the four Conservatives are playing here. They are cowards. They try to redirect from their own scandal and mismanagement. They pick on anyone who dares to stand on the side of justice and stand with Palestine. watching, the world is watching, and history will judge their actions accordingly. We call on the Ford government, on the federal government, to act in the motion that they passed, to fully implement an arms embargo now, to respect and uphold international law. Come on around you, friends. This is a diverse crowd. People from unions, from community, all of us coming together. And it is because of these actions, because people come together, because we mobilize, because we demonstrate, 
that the Canadian government has been forced to move so far. Let's keep going! supporter and comrade of our cause for a very long time and he has faced a Zionist smearing campaign. Shame! And despite all of the pressure from the Zionist lobby, Fred is still with us here today, loud and proud. Make some noise! A longtime supporter of our cause. Make some noise for Sid Ryan. community in the United States. From my own experience, from my own homeland, we had an intifada in 1916 when we kicked the British out of Ireland. But after, after that uprising, they took the leaders out into the courtyard and they executed eight of the leaders of the Irish Uprising. Yeah. Yeah. This did not kill the movement, my friends. It grew stronger and stronger and stronger to the point that a half a dozen years later, Ireland had its freedom, one of the first nations in the world to take on the might of the British Army and basically win their freedom. Yeah. Yeah. different times did not kill the Indian desire for freedom. No, it did not, my friends. It only grew stronger and India got its freedom from the British as well. So I want to go back to more recent history in Ireland. And the British were on the streets of Northern Ireland and in the city of Derry they shot dead 13 protesters. Yay! 13 protesters were shot dead. And instead of destroying the movement, the IRA ended up with its greatest recruitment 
that they ever had in the previous 50 years. Thousands of people joined the fight against the British Army. And then, in a very, very recent history, in the 1980s, Bobby Sands died on hunger strike in a prison, the Mays Prison in Belfast. Bobby Sand and eight other martyrs, eight other Irish patriots, they also died. Did they kill the movement when Margaret Thatcher allowed those hunger strikers to die? Like hell they did. They grew stronger and they grew stronger, my friends. And now let's finish on this. There was a great Irish patriot and his name was James Connolly. And James Connolly is a trade union leader. And Connolly was also in the Intifada and they bombed the general post office in Dublin and he was wounded. And they took him out and they sat him on a chair in Kilmainham jail and they shot a bullet through his heart. But they didn't kill the uprising, my friends, because the Irish continued the fight. And I say it to you today, because they assassinate a couple of leaders of the Palestinian movement, it does not mean for one second that the Palestinian movement and the desire for freedom, the desire for dignity, the desire to be able to treat it as trace of human beings. The Republic of Ireland and along with a few other countries in the world are working closely to recognize the state of Palestine. And here we are in Canada, and there's absolutely no goddamn reason why we should not in this nation recognize the state of Palestine. That is human rights, who believes, who is opposed to oppression, opposed to the colonization, of Palestine. For God's sake, stand up and say to politicians, you better pass legislation that recognizes the state of Palestine. Thank you very much, sisters and brothers. No matter who they kill, this will do nothing but increase our love for our cause and our love for our land. And inshallah, for everyone that they assassinate, 1,000 will rise from their mind. And we'll come out and liberate our land, inshallah. Please stay where you are until the crowd passes you and you're behind the banner. We need everybody to please stay behind the banner to keep our crowd loud, united, and coordinated because this is how we make our message clear and we keep our people safe again everyone please get behind the banner we do not need people in front of the banner or in front of the truck if you are found in front of the banner we will ask you to get behind it thank you viva viva palestina, viva, viva, palestina. <laughs>
We have seen genocide, ethnic cleansing, forced displacement. We have seen our people dispersed all across the world and forced into refugee camps. We have seen our people in the West Bank thrown into prison fighting for dignity. And we have seen Arab leaders turn their back on our struggle and capitulate. Our struggle is no stranger to loss and sacrifice. But even after the 1948 Nakba, our people resisted. Even after the Oslo Accord, our people resisted. Even after a peace was imposed on our people in Gaza, our people resisted. Even after the invasion of South Beirut, of the South and of Beirut, our people resisted. Because we have something that is stronger than 2,000 pounds American bomb. We have something more resilient than their so-called indestructible tanks. We have something to fight for. It is this fight that brings us here today. Our commitment to justice, dignity, and liberation is stronger than ever. Just yesterday, we witnessed our brothers and sisters in Gaza face yet another massacre. A massacre which has taken the lives of over 75 people. We continue to witness this occupation's desire to destroy the will of the Palestinian people. This arrogant occupation thinks that by killing our people, by assassinating leaders, that they will break the spirit of the Palestinian resistance. But we know that the spirit of the Palestinian people can never be broken. They can kill one Palestinian leader and thousands will rise to take his place. This arrogant occupation is desperate for an illusion of victory, but they will never destroy our people's will to live on their land and in dignity. Because our We must come together. 
together a lot of Muslim community to labor union, to the anti-war movement, to build a movement that demands a ceasefire, that demands an arms embargo, that demands an end to Zionist and imperialist occupation and aggression on the Middle East. All of these funds are going towards Mecca, which is an organization that operates in all of Palestine. It's one of the only organizations that are still operating and delivering aid in the north of Gaza. So we urge you all to please donate. You can donate through the link in the bio at PYM Toronto on Instagram. And you can also donate to any of the volunteers with donation boxes near you. Thank you.
So make some noise for yourself. So the last chant we'll do for today before Salah is a chant for Arab unity. So I want you all to repeat after me. Whatever I say, you say, Wihde, Wihde, Arabi, Yihd, Arabi means Arab unity. Because that is what we need. We cannot fall for the divisions that the Zionist enemy is laying for us. They are laying traps for us to fight each other over religion or over nationality. We are one united people and we will never see our demands met or our liberation until we see each other as one people. So thank you all for coming out today. I want to let you know that on November 2nd, there's an international day of action. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And we will be, uh, we'll be posting promotions and inviting people to our rallies. Please stay tuned by following us on social media at BYM Toronto and at Toronto for Palestine. Now we will have Al Maghrib and Usher prayer uh, right there by the street. So if anyone is looking to join this prayer, we ask you all to please move to the side, to join the street, and we'll be having Jama'a prayer. For everyone else, we ask you please to not leave alone. We need you to leave in numbers for your safety. If you need help getting to your subway or your car, please talk to a marshal in our vest and they'll help you get to wherever you want. Thank you so much for coming out, everyone. We'll see you all soon. Free, free, free Palestine!